Today I will talk about uh, sample preparation for flow cytometry. As Federica say, I'm a PhD student. I'm still uh, working on that. I'm still learning, so feel free to, inter to interrupt me every time you want. I would like to start with uh, an overview. So I will speak about the general introduction to sample preparation. I will show you how to prepare uh, blood cells uh, or tissue, different type of tissue. I will speak about sample clearance uh, and about the re-enrichment of a rare population. Then I will go through staining considerations. So I will speak about controls for senior specificity and uh, I will talk about different type of staining. And the last point of this talk is about dead cell discrimination. Uh, so I will, I will speak about how to physically remove the dead cells uh, or how discriminate them uh, during the analysis thanks to different dyes, okay? So in general, the workflow of flow cytometry starts with the sample preparation. You can have a cell culture, you can have a wood blood or different type of tissue, but in any case, the aim of this first step is to obtain a single cell suspension in order to be able to label every single cell with specific antibodies that are labeled with the fluorophore, okay? Then you go, you have to acquire your data and do the analysis. So the sample preparation is the very first step to obtain your results. And why is sample preparation so important? If you start in the best situation, you will get good results. At least you can try to have good results. But if you start in a bad situation, you will get trouble during all the procedure. You will get trouble during the acquisition of your sample. And at the end, you cannot even track uh, of your results. So during the sample preparation, always keep in mind which are your goals. You have to isolate the cells, all the cells that are present in a tissue. You have to be uh, careful to preserve the cellular viability and to preserve the expression of your epitope, your, of your target, okay? So if your starting sample is a cell culture, you are in the easiest situation. Um, you have just to harvest your cells. Of course, if the cells grow in addition, you may add some EDTA. You can use trypsin in order to detect them better, okay? After the harvesting, you have just to wash your cells with a physiological solution in order to remove all contaminating proteins, to remove debris, and then you resuspend the uh, cells at the right concentration, and you are ready, you have obtain a single cell suspension, you are ready to label the cells with specific antibodies. A little bit more complex uh, is obtain a single cell suspension from the wool blood. First of all, you have to choose the appropriate anticoagulant. For example, if you are interested in integrins, do not use EDTA, okay? Uh, you can storage the wool blood at room temperature, but remember to keep the extract cells on ice, okay? And always try to avoid the mechanical stress. Remember that uh, the 95% of the cells uh, in the wool blood are red cells, okay? So if you are interested in the other population of the, of, the, of the blood, you have to remove the red cells. If removal of red cells is not possible, you can add the, an antibody against CD45 to exclude them because red cells are CD45 negative. But in general, there are two methodics that allow to remove the red cells. For example, you can add FICO to your sample or you can, pour, you can use detergent to lyse the red cells. If you decide to uh, add the FICO to your samples, you have to spin, and after the spin, uh, you will obtain a full blood that is separated into different, uh, different components of the blood. Indeed, the FICO is a copolymer that allows to separate the cells based on their density. So it means that in the upper phase, you will find the plasma and the platelets, and you can find also the mononuclear cells. In the lower part, you will find the um, granulocyte and the red blood cells. 
Of course, if you are interested in uh, mononuclear cells, this is a good method, okay, because they are easily uh, isolable, okay. But if you are interested in, uh, uh, in granulocytes such as neutrophiles, uh, basophiles, uh, eosinophiles, it's better to use some detergent that induce the lives of red cells. The common uh, detergent that induce the lysis of red cells are ammonium chloride. Uh, this is less used that er erythrolyze, or you can induce the lysis of red cells by an hypotonic shock. As you can see here in this, in this plot, after the lysis of the red cells, you can identify the other population thanks to physical parameters, side scatter and forward scatter. As uh, others already introduced to you, uh, this the smaller one are lymphocytes, uh, a, uh, a little bit bigger are the monocytes, and the more complex cells uh, are granulocytes. Of course, if you cannot perform the lysis of red cells, you are not able to distinguish the other population, okay? But as already say, you can use uh, an antibody against CD45 in order to exclude them. So what about tissue? If you have tissue, if you want to obtain a single cell suspension from tissue that are, let me say, um, easy tissue, simply tissue, like uh, lymph nodes or spleen, you can go through a mechanical dissociation that can be manual or automatic. Uh, then you have to filter your samples through a 40, 70 micrometers nylon filter. Uh, then you wash your cells and you basically obtain uh, the single cell suspension, suspension and you are ready for um, the staining. But unfortunately, in the majority of the case, uh, you have more complex tissue and the mechanical dissociation is not enough. You have to, uh, in order to obtain a single cell suspension from lung, heart, uh, or solid tumor, you have to perform also an enzymatic dissociation. Uh, different type of enzyme uh, can be used for tissue dissociation. For example, if you want to isolate immune cells from the tissue, you can use the collagenase. It's a protease that targets uh, uh, peptide bounds between collagen in collagen, and different types are available. Another protease that is useful for uh, the isolation of the immune cells from the tissue is the dysphase. But this is less used because of its stronger activity. So always check, uh, uh, you have to preserve the, the, the expression of your epitope. Another enzyme that you can use is the trypsin, it's a serine protease, but uh, is useful for a softer dissociation. And remember that during your procedure, if you want to, when you have to prepare your tissue, you always got some dining cells. These cells release DNA, and the DNA is sticky. So if you want to obtain a single cell suspension, you can also uh, add DNAs, that is a nuclease, uh, to your samples in order to remove the DNA. Nowadays, a different type of enzyme are commercially, commercially available. So, um, always check in the literature which is the best procedure uh, for the preparation of your specific tissue, which is the best uh, enzyme that you can use to, uh, in order to disaggregate better your tissue. Okay, for example, I, I work with uh, the lung and I want to, in order to isolate immune cells from the lung, I perform a mechanical dissociation and then I use collagenase type 2 to, in order to require uh, to isolate the immune cells. But if your tissue is more complex, is like a, a brain, a single type of collagenase is not enough. You have to perform the dissociation, the enzymatic dissociation uh, with a combination of collagenase type 1 and collagenase type 2. Again, also for the heart, one type of collagenase is not enough, but in this case, you have to, it's better to use a collagenase type 2 and collagenase type 4. So it's extremely important checking the literature which is the best solution for you. Maybe another person do the job for you, okay? So just checking the literature. 
Once you obtain a single cell suspension, you have also to um, keep the single cell suspension and you have to um, prevent the, 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 you have to maintain the cell phone clear, okay? So for that reason, you have to keep your extract cells on ice. You may add ADTA in order to remove the calcium and magnesium. Uh, filter your sample through a 40, 70 micrometer nylon filter. The size of the filter depends on what you are looking for, on the size of the, your cells of interest. And we suspend the, the, the samples at the right concentration. Usually I use one to, uh, to 10 million of cells for a mass, okay? Low temperature, so keeping the, the samples on ice also add to, um, for, for the, the sample clearance, okay? Dead cells indeed induce a formation of clamp, increase and unspecific antibody binding. Dead cells are high autofluorescence and mm, this phenomenon reduces the dynamic range between the positive signal and uh, the negative signal. So in this case, you will lose the weakly positive cell samples, as you can see here. Um, I will talk in a minute uh, about uh, how to remove the dead cells uh, or how to discriminate thanks, thanks to dye. So for, for now, uh, I want to consider also this point. How many cells are you expecting with your population? If you decide to acquire uh, one million of cells, and the frequency of your population of interest is 1%, at the end you will collect 10,000 cells. Okay, that is quite a guess, it's a good number. But if the frequency of your population of interest is 0.1%, at the end you will collect only 1,000 cells. This number is, um, starts to become uh, statistically insignificant. So at that point, you can decide to increase your cells in population, acquire more cells, but it's wasting on time, of time. Uh, you may got problem during the process uh, of your data because the, the data is bigger, the data are bigger. So you can also decide to enrich a rare population. You can use a gradient density using FICOL, or there, now there are also um, beads, magnetic beads, that allow to isolate a population of interest. Okay, let's go through staining in consideration. There are different types of staining. The easiest and the one that have least background is the extracellular surface. In that case, you label your cells with the specific antibody that uh, uh, target the um, epitopes that are expressed on the surface of the cells. Okay. Another one is the intracellular staining. This staining requires fixation of the cells and a permeabilization of the extracellular membrane in order to reach the cytosolic protein. The third one is the nuclear staining. Also, this staining requires fixation of the cells and permeabilization, but not only of the extracellular membrane, you have to permeabilize also the nuclear membrane in order to reach the nuclear uh, protein. I want to give you also some consideration. I always perform my staining uh, in a low volume. Usually I use 50, 100 microliter in order to prevent the dispersion of antibody. I stain my cells on ice because the cells, of course, can also internalize the antibody and low temperature prevents this phenomenon. Low temperature also slows down the cell metabolism and prevents the cell death. But be careful, because of kinetic of bandit, if you stain your cells on ice, you have to uh, label your cells at least for 30, 45 minutes, okay? Uh, but always check on the data sheet, because some antibodies are temperature sensitive and may require higher temperature. Perform the stain in the dark, because fluorophores can be bleached, and in this case, you will lose your signal. Remember, as uh, previously Juzi said, to add some DSA or FCS in a staining buffer, so you can add some protein to, in, into PBS in order to balance the protein-protein interaction. 
So to, inter to currently interpret your results is extremely important and the, uh, the control for signal specificity. Indeed, an antibody can bind to cells also unspecifically because of stigma, so because of ionic and hydrophobic interaction, or because antibody bind to F0 receptor. Okay? As you are already know, the immune cells, some immune cells such as uh, macrophages, uh, granulocytes, uh, dendritic cells, express on the surface the FC receptor. It's meaning that when you perform your staining, your antibody can bind the FC receptor and you will got a positive signal that is unspecific. There are several um, ways to solve this problem. For example, you can stain your cells with FC blocker reagent. So you can uh, stain the cells with CD16 and CD32 in order to block the FC receptor. Then, when you perform your staining, your antibody will bind the specific target and you will get the real signal, the real positive signal. As you can see here, without FC block, I have this population that is CD3 negative. CD3 is the marker for uh, T lymphocyte. But this population, as you can see here, express is positive for T cell receptor. Okay, this is quite impossible. Indeed, if you stain your cells before your extracellular staining with FC blocker reagent, this population disappears. Another way to control unspecific binding is to use the isotype control. Isotype control, uh, isotype is the, an antibody that has the same constant region and the same fluorophore of your specific antibody. So using the isotype control, you can distinguish the real positive signal for, from the unspecific signal. Of course, the most accurate control for your staining specificity is the, your biological control. For example, you may have a cells that doesn't express your target of interest, as you can see here. So when you have to plan your experiment, always keep in mind uh, you have to think very well about the, con the bi biological control. Okay? It can be the difference between the publish or not publish uh, your paper. Another one is the fluorescence minus one. Okay, if you have to stain, to label your cells with more than four or five markers, you got the problem of the spread of the other fluorescence into one specific channel, for example, PE. Okay? You can solve this problem with the fluorescent minus one, that is a control mix that includes all the other fluorophores, all the fluorophores, except one, for example, PE in this case. This FMO is useful to determine the threshold for the positive signal of, uh, of one antibody when you have a complex mix, as you can see here. In this example, the cells were labeled with four antibodies, with four fluorophores. And in order to determine the threshold, the threshold for uh, CD4 positive cells, CD4 PA positive cells, uh, you can use this FMO, so you can, in the, you can label the cells with all the other antibody except uh, CD4P. Okay, as you can see here, with the FMO you can put your threshold here. Instead, if you use only the isotype control, you set the, the threshold in a wrong position because you are not considering the spread of the other fluorophores. So, what about the staining? As already say, extracellular staining, uh, you have to bind the uh, epitope that are spread on the surface of your cells. Of course, to correctly discriminate positive and negative uh, uh, population, it's very important to choose the proper dilution of your antibody. For that reason, you have to titrate your antibody. From your point of view, here in this example, which is the best the dilution of your antibody? One in 20? One in five? One in 10, yes. Uh, you have to choose the right concentration, the best concentration uh, that ensure positive cells are bright and the negative remain in 
and saying the part of the of your plot, okay? Of course, you 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 are going to to choose this one because you have a bigger exactly you have a bigger gap. Okay, so at the end of your extracellular staining, uh, you have to wash your cells from the antibody in excess, and then you are ready to acquire your data. It happened always to me that it's eight o'clock. Maybe you want to go home, you are tired, okay? Maybe you plan something with your friends. We, so you have two choices. You can call your friends and say, sorry guys, it's happened. The, the one that, exactly. <laughs> You can call your friend and say, sorry guys, I'm still working, I'll see you another time. Or you can choose to fix your sample. Okay, fixation is a great tool that uh, allows to uh, organize better your experiment and for some application it's mandatory. For example, intracellular staining. So if you decide, if you have to uh, fix uh, the cells before the staining, check in the literature, because if your fixation can alter or not the, the epitope of interest. After the staining, if you want to fix the cells, again, check on the data sheet, because some floor for are uh, susceptible to quenching upon fixation. Usually, fixation is done in paraformaldehyde that create bonds between proteins. Uh, I suggest to use fresh PFA, not older than uh, one month. Uh, you have to stay in the cells for 20, 30 minutes. Then you can wash your cells with PBS in order to remove uh, PFA. And your cell pool will be stable for at least three days. As I already say, um, fixation is necessary for some application. For example, intracellular staining. Intracellular staining requires a fixation of the cells and a permeabilization of uh, uh, the extracellular membrane in order to reach the uh, cytosolic protein. You have to choose the most appropriate permeabilization procedure. For example, you can use detergent like digitonin or saponin, or you can use alcohol, 70% of, al of alcohol or ethanol or methanol. And remember, if you want to use alcohol, uh, the first step of fixation of the cells is not necessary because uh, alcohol fix also the cells because it induces the denaturation of the protein and the precipitation of the protein. So in this case, the, the, the fixation with paraformal data is not necessary. Moreover, you can decide to use alcohol to fix your cells because the, uh, you can put your your sample at minus 20, and it's stable also for one month or more, okay? In flow cytometry, intracellular staining is used to assess T cell activation, okay? This assay is based on blocking of secretion of cytokines such as interferon gamma or TNF alpha, thanks to inhibitors such as brefeldin A or monensin. In particular about that, I want to show you an experiment that I recently performed uh, in which I want to determine the interferon gamma production in tumor-specific T lymphocytes. Okay, first of all, I inject tumor cells intravenously. These cells uh, are characterized by the expression of uh, the model antigen uh, of albumin. Seven days after the injection, I harvest the, lympho the lympho node, okay? I process the lymph nodes in order to obtain a single, single cell suspension. I re-stimulate the cells with the model antigen of albumin and at the same time I block the um, secretion of the cytokine. Then I, stain, I perform the extracellular stain in order to identify the T cells uh, CD3 positive and uh, on that population the CD8 positive T cells. I fix my cells, I permeabilize the extracellular membrane, and I stain the cells in order to identify the interferon gamma uh, production. As you can see here, the CD8 T cells that derive from tumor-bearing mice can produce interferon gamma. This is my biological control. Uh, this lymphocyte derived from a 
a healthy mouse, they are not able to produce uh, interferon gamma in, re in, in, or in response of uh, stimulation, breast stimulation. Okay. What about the nuclear staining? Nuclear staining in flow cytometry is very useful to identify cells for which we don't have enough uh, extracellular marker to identify them. This is the case of uh, CD4 TRX cells that are identified in the, in the mouse uh, by the expression of FOXP3 in nuclear protein. As I already say, also the nuclear staining requires a fixation of the cells, but the permeabilization has to be stronger because you have to permeabilize also the nuclear membrane. Okay? For that reason, a reagent that you can use is Triton X. It's stronger. It's, uh, and again, I want to show you an experiment uh, that I recently performed. Uh, I again inject uh, two more cells intravenously. And 15 days after, after the injection, I harvest the lung in this case. I uh, perform uh, a mechanical dissociation an enzymatic dissocia dissociation with uh, collagenase type 2. I um, stain the cells with uh, the FC blocker, the reagents. Then I perform the extracellular staining in order to identify T cells. And in this population, the CD4 positive T cells and the CD8 positive T cells. Then I fix the cells, I permeabilize the nuclear membrane. And I stain the cells with FOXP3 antibody in order to identify the TREG population, as you can see here. I use as control the FMO, that is my, to, to determine the threshold for the positive signal of uh, TREG. And that's it. The last point of this talk is about that cell discrimination. So, as I already say, uh, dead cells induce the formation of clamp, induce, increase the non-specific antibody binding, uh, are high out of fluorescence. So thanks to physical parameters, you can exclude debris, but this is not enough. You can choose two different uh, strategies. You can physically remove the dead cells from your sample, so again, you can use FICO and perform a density gradient in order to uh, remove the dead cells from your sample, or you can use some immunomagnetic depletion uh, kit. But if removing of dead cells is not possible, you can also discriminate uh, your dead cells during the analysis thanks to different dyes. Common dyes that are used for um, discrimination of dead cells are DNA binding dyes, such as propidium iodide or 7NA. These dyes are excluded by live cells. It's meaning that, as you can see here, the negative cells are the live cells. Instead, the positive cells, the, the fluorescent one, are the dead cells. Uh, if you want to discriminate not only dead from live cells, but also if you want to discriminate the apoptotic cells, you can bind your cells with a combination of 7-AMAD and Nexin-5. And Nexin-5 binds the phosphatidylserin that is exposed on the extracellular membrane during the apoptosis. So at the end of your staining, you acquire your samples, and you can find that the population that is positive only for a Nexin-5 is the, uh, represent the apoptotic cells. The both positive cells population are the dead cells, okay? Of course, the both negative uh, are, are the live cells. Unfortunately, these dye are not compatible with fixation. So you can decide to use another type of uh, dyes. These are protein binding dyes that are uh, bi the bind to both live and dead cells, and they are compatible with fixation. fixation. Of course, as you can see here in this plot, the, the, the cells, the population that is more fluorescent is the, represent the dead cells. Instead, the one that is less fluorescent is, represents the live cells. So this was uh, the last uh, slide of my talk. <laughs>
I would like to thank, uh, as Frederica said, Nicoletta. She was uh, uh, my my supervisor, my previous supervisor. She introduced me to to site fluorimeter. She, uh, you will meet meet her in the next day. And I would like to thank you also, Julia and Federica, that helped me, me during this presentation, and of course, all of you for your attention. I hope it was useful for you, and if you have any questions, please feel free to, to ask me. <laughs>